So in this video, I'm going to try to convince you that doing a double integral is nothing else and nothing more than doing a single integral inside of a single integral. Okay? Now, the way I was taught uh, this on the first, the first time I learned it was by learning Fubini's theorem and then writing the maths and then we applied it. And to be honest, that's all you need to know in order to solve problems. But you know that I like to challenge myself and try to explain clearly the reason behind this. I did that with matrices. I always gave you the, the interpretation of linear transformation and give you the, the visualization. So I'm going to try the same thing here. Now, the disclaimer is that the visualization is quite complicated and it's difficult to explain. So I'm going to do my best. And my only advice is that don't worry if you don't get it completely. It's not useful to understand why it works for now. So if you don't exactly understand it, don't worry. Just focus on the next videos where we will see the actual maths written in maths notation and we will do problems. That's what you really need. But hopefully in the future, once you have done several double integrals and then you wonder why did they work, maybe you can come back to this video and rewatch it until you understand it. Because the satisfaction you feel when you understand things in a clear way is, is always very good, right? So I'm going to do my best to explain this. And for that, I'm going to go back to the model of dividing the area into blocks. So let's say I want to calculate the double integral of a function f of xy, which is this transparent yellow smooth curve here, on this area a, which is a rectangle with x going between minus 1 and 1 and y going between minus 1 and 1. Okay? So I want to calculate the volume under this curve. And the way I do it is, as you know, I divide the area into little rectangles and I calculate the volume of all these cuboids. So I do a double sum and I get the total volume of the cuboids. But instead of doing a double sum, I'm going to divide it into steps. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start at the lowest value of y here. okay, And I'm going to add up the volume of these cuboids. Then I'm going to go one step further to the next row of cuboids and I'm going to calculate the volume of these cuboids. Then I'm going to go one step further, calculate the volume of those cuboids, and so on. By calculating the volume of those cuboids at each step in Y, I will find the total volume for all of the cuboids, right? That is a very simple concept. So I'm sure you don't have trouble understanding that. But the main point that I'm, what I'm going to do now is that I'm going to plot something here on the right. And what is this something? Okay, on the horizontal axis, you have the y uh, axis, which corresponds to the y axis here. It goes between minus 1 and 1. And then the width here simply corresponds to the width of the cuboids along the y axis. Okay, so this width is delta y. Okay, but now what is this height? Okay, so this height, I define it as the area, so the height of the graph on the on the right is equal to the brown area here, okay? So the cross-sectional area of all of these cuboids in this single row. So this cross-sectional area is the height of this rectangle, okay? And therefore, the volume of this row of cuboids is equal to this cross-sectional area multiplied by the thickness which is equal to the height of this rectangle multiplied by the width, okay? So I hope I have convinced you that the volume of this row of cuboids is equal to the area of this rectangle, okay? Because delta y is delta y here, and the height here is the area of the cross-section. So now this means that calculating the volume for all of the cuboids is simply the same as calculating the area of all of these rectangles, right? So as I change my y-axis, I'm changing the row of cuboids, which means that I'm looking at a different rectangle here, okay? So basically, I'm saying that calculating the volume of these cuboids 
is equivalent to calculating the area of these rectangles. Okay? So once that is clear, let's move to the continuous case. So I'm going to increase or I'm going to decrease delta x to zero. And I'm also going to decrease delta y to zero. Okay? And when I do that, now what I called here as the height, which was the area, the cross-sectional area of these cuboids, now this cross-sectional area becomes an integral along x. Okay, so the integral of the function along x is the area under the curve. So now the height of this graph is equal to an integral along x. And now the area under this graph, which should give me the volume of the original integral that I wanted, the area under this graph on the right will also be an integral, but this time it's an integral along y. And it's an integral of what function? The function that defines the height of this curve and the height of this curve let me repeat is the integral along x therefore if i do the integral along y of the integral along x i get the area under this curve which is equal to the volume under this surface okay let me clarify that further so here this is no longer an interactive visualization but at least everything is labeled more clearly okay and now also notice that i have rotated x and y so now this is x and this is y okay so let's see what we were doing we were burying y okay so we are fixing for example y zero and this fixes a certain line along the x y plane okay and this line corresponds to a certain line along our curve right and this line is f of x at a fixed y0. And this is this blue line here. So now if I calculate the integral of this curve along x between x equals a and x equals b, I'm going to get the area. So this blue colored area here, which now I filled with red. Yeah. So that integral along x, I, I put it as the height here on the right. Okay? So this height which depends on y0. So of course, if I moved y0 to another point, I would be doing another cross section. So the area would be different, right? So therefore, this height depends on y0 and it creates this curve here, okay? And this curve here is what I called h of y, which is a function of y. And h of y is defined as the integral on x of f of xy with respect to x. So that's why I'm adding up this cross-sectional area here, okay? So this integral gives me the height, which is this function, okay? So now if this height, I do the integral along y of this function, I'm going to get the volume under the original function. So this volume here, all this volume here, will be the area under this curve, which is given by the integral of hy with y changing between c and d okay so let me repeat that the volume under f of xy which is the integral i want to calculate which is the double integral of f of xy is equal to the integral along y of a function hy and this function hy is the integral along x of f of xy along x so this is an integral which is inside another integral. And now the key thing to realize is that the order doesn't matter. We could also have done, instead of fixing y and looking at this area here, we could have fixed x, right? So if we, fix, if we fix x, we have this cross section here. So now we have this red area here. And this red area here is nothing else that than the integral of f of x y with respect to y between y equals c and y equals d which are the limits in y so this integral here defines a function which is this function here that i'm plotting so the height of this function represents the area and this area depends on x so when we change x 
we are changing the cross section and therefore we are changing the area. So that means that we are changing this function here. And now if we integrate this function between x equals a and x equals b, we will get the area under this function, which will be equal to the volume under the original function f of xy. Okay, so the argument works both ways. We can first integrate along x and then integrate that, the result along y, or we can first integrate along y and then integrate the result along x. Okay, and that is what I'm writing here. First integrating along x resulting in this function h of y and the result integrated along y, or we first integrate along y resulting on a function g of x and that result we integrate it along x, okay? So if I substitute the definition of hy here and I also substitute the definition of gx, I substitute it here, what I get is what we call Fubini's theorem. So Fubini's theorem is telling us that the double integral of f of xy on an area A is simply an integral inside of another integral. So it's an integral in x between x equals a and a x equals b, which correspond to the limits a and b in the x direction. And the result of that is a function of y, right? So remember, this will be a function of y. Let's call it hy. And remember, I told you that when you do an integral with respect to a certain variable, that variable disappears. That's exactly what happened here. The integral of this function, which is a function of x and y, after doing the integral along x, the dependence on x disappears. So now we have a function that depends on y. And this function that depends on y, we can do the integral along y. And that will give us the volume under the original surface f of xy, which is the double integral. Okay, in other words, a double integral is just an integral inside of an integral. And the order in which you do the integrals, you first do x between a and b, and then you do y between c and d. It doesn't matter. We can also do y between c and d, and then we do x between a and b. Okay, this is true for rectangular areas. Later we will see what happens when the area is not rectangular and then it becomes much trickier. But for rectangular areas, the concept of a double integral is very simple. So if all this explanation felt like too much hand waving, I apologize and don't worry. Just focus on the actual Fubini's theorem and in the next videos I will show you examples of how it works and that's it. Don't worry about all of this. But if at some point you are thinking, you are philosophizing at home saying, why did Fubini's theorem work? I don't remember. Please come back to this and try to understand it. Okay? It's always very satisfactory to understand these things. Excellent. See you in the next video where we will do examples of Fubini's theorem.